Here in Capua, 100 miles southeast of Rome, a man called Spartacus led a group of highly trained specialist slaves, gladiators, in a desperate attempt to escape. This was a do or die mission that turned into a mass revolt and threw the Roman Republic into crisis. The Thracian people had a long, proud warrior tradition. And there's actually a possibility that the name Spartacus is the Latin version of a Thracian word, Sparadakos, famous for his spear. But according to Appian, initially, Spartacus wasn't actually fighting against the Romans, but with them, probably as some kind of a mercenary. From the historian Plutarch, we know that Spartacus was bought by Lentulus Batiatus, owner of the famous Capua Gladiator School in southern Italy. The start of the journey towards the fateful day of his revolt. Spartacus and 70 other gladiators broke out of the Capua Ludus. This band of runaways, roaming through these very hills and woods in southern Italy, would soon become a rebel army to challenge Rome. We're told by Appian that Spartacus quickly made for the highest point in the landscape. Spartacus and a few hundred of his followers camped out near the summit of Mount Vesuvius. Pursued and then trapped by Roman forces, they made a daring escape by turning wild vines into ropes and lowering themselves down behind the Roman soldiers, who they then massacred. Spartacus and his deeds of daring do were becoming the stuff that legends are made of. That summer of 73 BC, as word spread of Spartacus's revolt, more and more slaves left their fields and abandoned their masters to join him. First a trickle and then a flood. Soon there were tens of thousands rampaging through the countryside, spreading terror and panic. For the Roman Republic, what had started as a simple prison breakout had escalated with horrifying speed into something much more serious, a full-blown slave revolt. What's more, we know from Appian that even some free men joined with Spartacus. A year after Spartacus's breakout and after months of anarchy in southern Italy, 
Rome raised four legions, 20,000 soldiers, to take on Spartacus and his 40,000 rebels. Near Mount Gargano, the Romans intercepted a column commanded by Spartacus's right-hand man, Crixus, as it moved north. Spartacus used speed and surprise to inflict a humiliating defeat on the legions. But Rome would never make peace with him. His breakout and the rebellion that had snowballed from that one day was a challenge to the Republic's authority that could not be tolerated. The Senate, resorting to desperate measures, had awarded command to Marcus Licinius Crassus, a man whose ambition was only matched by his vast personal fortune. Crassus had been awarded sweeping emergency powers by the Senate and put at the head of a huge Roman army that this ambitious billionaire had largely paid for by himself. Now, this was a problem. The Roman Republic was full of checks and balances precisely to prevent powerful individuals turning themselves into dictators. But that day of Spartacus's breakout had thrown Rome into a panic. This unorthodox deal with Crassus was a massive gamble, and no one knew where it was going to end. After two years of rebellion and battle, Spartacus's army, about 30,000 strong, squared up to Crassus's 40,000 in a final showdown with Rome. If we win today... <laughs> I will have many horses to choose from. We lose, Crassus wins the day. I will have no need for a horse. Plutarch tells us that in the heat of the battle, Spartacus risked everything on one mad, desperate charge straight towards Crassus. In the aftermath of the defeat, there was no I am Spartacus moment. That was a Hollywood invention. Instead, there was just typical, savage Roman retribution. <laughs> <laughs>